OK, so. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Sue Howard. I'm the Deputy Chief Inspector for Adult Social Care for the North Region. And I'm going to give you a short overview today of what we can expect on this webinar and then go into talking to you about our new monitoring approach and what this means for adult social care services. We'll also um, spend most of our time on um, answering as many questions as we possibly can about this topic. So just to cover a few ground rules for you, we hope that you'll find this time useful and productive. Please bear with us and let's cross our fingers for the technology. We will do our best to stick to time. Um, if you've got any um, questions, do um, pop them into the chat and we've got people in the background who are looking at the questions and they're going to theme them and, and bring up as, uh, as many questions as we can afterwards. If you can, please, we would ask you to uh, post your name um, so that we can um, we, we know who it is that's asking the questions. That would be really helpful. Um, and for your information, this webinar is going to be um, recorded. OK. So thank you very much. If we could move on to the next slide, please. So over the last year, driven by the need to adapt to the pandemic, we've made real progress in our ability to better monitor services. As you know, we introduced the emergency support framework, which gave us a structured way to have conversations with providers to help monitor risk and to support them during what was a really difficult time. We've now built on that with our transitional monitoring approach and the app is going to be uh, integrated into the regulatory platform. So that is going to be our new IT system going forward. This is going to become the one stop shop for all of our inspector activity. As we move out of this transition period, we are evolving our approach again. And we are now making progress progress in how we monitor our services in three key areas. So we are able to develop our ability to better monitor risk and help us to be more targeted in our regulatory activity. Remembering that we are all starting to emerge from the pandemic. This new uh, technology and the new intelligence that we have brings our information together into one place for our inspection teams. And it's a presented in a way for each service that enables them to make better decisions. I'm sure you'll appreciate that we need to prioritise our work and we need to make sure that we are inspecting services where we need to inspect them. It also is giving us an opportunity to test the elements of how we might want to work in the future, including how we're going to have a more up to date view of risk to people who use services. All of this is as we work towards a new assessment framework, which will be available to us in 2022. And with that new assessment framework, we expect the flexibility to be able to inspect services in a different way and to rate services in a different way, which, as I say, will allow us to be even more flexible. OK, thank you, thank you, Latoria, if we could move on. So how is this going to work? So every month we review all of the data and the information that we hold about hold about all of our services. This gives us a view of how we can prioritise our regulatory activity and, and better monitor risk. As I say, as you can appreciate, we lost in a way 18 months during the pandemic of our normal schedule activity. So there are some services that we simply didn't inspect that we would normally have inspected. So this helps us to think about where we need to go now and where we need to go next. So that information review is based on a number of key factors. For example, whether or not there is any ongoing regulatory activity at a service. So whether there's anything currently happening right now. Our services are going to be placed in priorities. Where the review can't find evidence that we need to reassess that either the rating or the quality at a service, 
we're going to publish and we are publishing a short statement on the services page on our website. That lets them and people who know who use the services know that this review has taken place and at this moment we don't have any concerns based on the information we hold at the time. Now that review will happen for every service every month and in a little while I'll tell you uh, the types of information that we use for that, re that review. But more importantly, this will free up inspection time for our inspectors to be able to focus on those services where risk may be higher. In the cases where the information review indicates we might need to assess a rating or, or, or assess quality, we're going to further monitor that service and we'll use either monitoring calls or indeed we'll use an inspection. If we do an inspection, we would hope to be able to use a focus methodology which would allow us to update a rating. This work is, is built on a, on a Dynamics platform and we created that, that platform in response to the pandemic. And that is going to feed directly into the development of our new IT system. As I say, that brings together all of the information that we need. It brings together all of the information for our inspectors so that they can make better decisions and be more targeted in our regulatory activity. Importantly, we'll use this as our vehicle for testing things that we want to do in the future. So in the first in the first instance, this is through providing monthly updates to people who use services about level of risk in a service. But we're also going to look to explore how we can capitalise on increased flexibility in our approach, which will be brought about following our consultations. And we're going to start to test elements of this through our regulatory model development. To ensure that we're making consistent and robust decisions, we will also carry out sampling, so random sampling and quality assurance of the band one services. So those are the services with the public statement. And this makes sure that we have got that intelligence model correct and that we are making the right judgments. And we'll do that by either having conversations with the provider or indeed, in most cases, it will be by carrying out an inspection. OK, thanks very much. Next slide, please. So this slide tells you about the types of information that we will be reviewing to decide whether or not we have a public statement or indeed whether we have a monitoring call or indeed whether or not we are going to inspect. So we're going to look at registration information, we're going to look at type of service, we're going to look at the size and indeed the registration of uh, the registered manager statement uh, status. We'll of course look at our um, current status of, of where are our judgments of our ratings, whether or not the service was compliant with regulations last time, whether or not there's been any outcome from any recent monitoring activity and length of time since we last inspected. As you know, we receive information um, from you around uh, in notifications, we receive complaints, we receive safeguarding information, whistleblowing and give feedback and care on care. And all of that information is collated to give us a view and to give us a picture. Based on the current information that we've got, approximately 60% of adult social care services would receive a public statement with roughly 6% recommended for inspection. The caveat to that, of course, is that that can change at any time. If we have information of concern about a service, then as you know, we could indeed inspect uh, you know, very, very quickly. The next slide, tells you what it is that we say on our public statement. So this tells you when we carried out the review, that we've not found any evidence that we need to carry out any inspection or reassess the rating at this stage, but that indeed that can change at any time. And as I say, this is a, uh, this is a monthly um, review uh, 
Um, so we're, we're keeping on top of that all of the time. And in the meantime, of course, we've got services that are having a monitoring approach with a monitoring call, some of which will turn into an inspection. And indeed, we've also got um, uh, services that are already prioritised for inspection. So that is very, very briefly um, an overview of the approach that we're using at the moment. And it's and I absolutely appreciate that is also quite high level. So we're going to open up the session now to be able to take as many questions as we possibly can and hopefully give you as many answers as we can. So hope that was helpful and over to you. We can give you a bit more detail as part of the questions and answers. Thanks, Sue. That was um, really helpful. Uh, we've had uh, one question from uh, Jackie uh, and they ask for services that were inspected prior to the pandemic and were rated as requires improvement. Can they anticipate an inspection? Um, so the point is insurers are getting very anxious about waiting and some keens are keen for us to visit again. I don't know if you want to pick that one up, Sue or Matthew. So from uh, requires improvement on its own isn't going to be the only reason why we would um, go out to inspect a service. So we're going to look at the rating of that service against everything else that we uh, that we already hold about that provider as to whether or not we are going to inspect. So it may very well be actually in that case that we would do a, a direct monitoring approach, have a call, assess all of the evidence, have a call with the provider and then make a decision as to whether or not we were going to inspect. So I can't say give you in a de definitive yes that means that you are definitely going to have an inspection if it is that we make the decision to inspect we also and i'm sure you will appreciate this have to prioritize that against all of the other services that need to that we need to inspect from the point of view of making sure that people using services are safe and responding to the public's requirement of cqc we've got to make sure that we are targeting our activity where it is needed most. Absolutely appreciate the insurance point. We have um, we have heard this has been um, an issue that providers are dealing with um, and we are where we can looking to go to uh, reflect improvement. But as I say, we are having to prioritise some of that against risk in services and I'm sure you'll appreciate that um, CQC, the expectation of CQC is that we will always look to risk first. So Matthew, I don't know whether you want to add to that. Happy to see. I think the only thing I would add is just to reiterate the point that you made that um, in part this approach is about our recovery from COVID as well. So we've had 18 months where we've been really clear our inspections aren't triggered by frequency rules. So how long a service has had a particular rating for um, isn't our trigger for inspection. We're really relying upon our intelligence, what we know about services um, and really using our resources where they're needed most. I think that that's the only thing I would just add. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't know. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Sue. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, one of the most liked questions was, will registered managers or providers be able to see what information is held and how that information is assessed? So I have popped a comment in the chat as a, there is a link to our website but is it is there anything else you wanted to add to that Matthew just to give a bit more context um happy to yep yeah. <clears throat> okay so um so what information um uh would we be sort of looking at and uh, what sort of questions are we are we asking so um, at the moment, we're not able to share the, the specific model that we're using um, to use to inform our, um, our, our intelligence and inspections. But as to cover the sorts of things that we're considering um, is the rating of the service and the notifications that we receive from you as providers and the interactions that our inspectors have with your registered managers and yourselves as providers. Um, also looking at information that we gather from partner agencies such as local authorities and commissions 
commissioners, um, information that we receive from members of the public. Um, that Often that's positive information, but it might also be um, information that we share with you if um, concerns have been raised with us, excuse me. Um, and they're really the sorts of things that we really rely upon to inform our decisions about inspections at the moment. Um, and of course, the key thing will be the outcome of the monitoring activity. So what we really hope is that our monitoring activities are a collaborative process between our inspectors and between you as providers to really help us arrive at the best decisions about where our resources are needed most in terms of inspections. Thanks, okay. Andy. I don't know if there's any other questions or Sue, if you've got anything to add. Thanks, Matthew. Um, so just following on with uh, our inspection priorities, um, how is CQC prioritising inspections uh, for new services, the so ones that haven't been uh, inspected before as a result of the pandemic? Do you want me to take that one, Andy? Yeah, sure. So, do to you. so we do we do see um, new services as being a, a priority, services that haven't been rated. Um, again, I have to say because of the pandemic and because we were not able to get out to assess new services mm -hmm. in the same way, we've got to prioritise even those new services. So what we're saying is that services that have been registered for over 12 months are seen as being a priority for us and they are services that we mm -hmm. are um, looking to inspect and that we are looking to to, um, to to give a, a, an initial rating. Um, I, I mean, I, I can see lots of comments in the chat um, because everybody, of course, is looking for us to come to inspect, looking for us to, um, to be able to demonstrate improvement in their services, all of which we absolutely, absolutely accept is really important, not just to the sector, but to people using services and indeed to ourselves. Please don't think that we don't absolutely understand that and know that that's really important. It's also a really important part of our strategy going forward. It is just as you can imagine that we are obviously having to prioritise, make sure that we are uh, that we are using our resources in the best way. And what we cannot do is leave any risk to one side. Um, uh, you know, we have to, we must make sure that that has um, you know is given our uh, highest priority. Thank you, Sue. Um, so I'll just group a couple of questions um, together. Um, uh, and it's really about sort of, uh, um, again, about improving. So um, there's some services that are currently rated as good, striving towards uh, the outstanding rating. Uh, so the question is sort of, you know, how are we going to sort of consider those um, potential inspections and um, how will we begin to sort of monitor that, that improvement as well? Do you want to take that one, Matthew? Yep, certainly. Um, thank you. So, um, at the moment, um, our, our resources and our inspections will be focused on where they're needed most, and often that will be in response to information of concern and risk. However, um, it will also be to reflect improvement and the way that we'll prioritise our ability to reflect improvement is where the rating of a service is having an impact either upon uh, the ability of that service to continue to provide care or upon the capacity of a local system. So at the moment our resources aren't able to be focused upon um, reflecting improvement from good to outstanding um, and, and that's a really difficult thing for us to talk about but it brings me back again, I think, to this is in part about our recovery from COVID. This is an interim methodology and we know that hopefully by this time next year, um, if not before, we'll have a new assessment framework and that will give us the ability to better reflect improvement and to do that more flexibly. Um, so I don't know Sue, if there's anything you'd wish to add to that. Yeah, I think it's worth I think it's worth mentioning that um, and a number of people have mentioned it. One of the things we're not able to do at this stage of the game is re-rate a service without crossing the threshold mm. because that is part of our methodology. And for us to be able to change that methodology, we need to go out to consultation. 
So one of the things that they will look at as part of the new assessment framework is in what circumstances would it be appropriate to be able to re-rate re even some elements um, of an overall rating by actually not physically crossing the threshold, but we are not there yet. So a number of people say, how will you do that without crossing the threshold? The truth is we won't as it stands. So what we have said to our teams is where possible, when you are out crossing the threshold, undertaking an inspection, we ask an inspector to use the, a methodology which will enable them to re-rate the service at the same time. However, the caveat I'll put around that is, if, a serve, if the risk is very high and we need to go out really, really quickly, we need to use what we call a targeted methodology, which then doesn't enable us to do that. But if there is opportunity to really think that through and to plan, then what we're asking our inspectors to do is to use a focused methodology and to re-rate. But as I say, unfortunately, we, we simply can't do that on all inspections. Thanks, Sue. Um, that's really helpful. Um, and there's, there's quite um, a few questions that sort of cover um, services rate as good and striving towards out, outstanding or uh, requires improvement to, to good. So I think um, that's covered that. Thank you. Um, so one of the questions is about us publishing potentially out of date ratings that hasn't been inspected for a, a, a long time. So I just wonder if you want to maybe bring in a bit more about the statement that we're, we're publishing and, and how, that, how we're sort of using that to sort of say this is our current position. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we absolutely acknowledge that, and we're very conscious that we what we want to have as current a position as we can. Hence, us using this particular approach to have in the background an intelligence review, and then where necessary a further review. Um, and in actual fact, that means that we have got a current, um, a, a, at least a current view of the majority of our services. Um, it we, we absolutely recognise it's it's not the same as coming out and actually re-rating um, the, the the service, but it is to give some assurance that at this stage of the game we're not needing um, to do that. Um, what I would say is that we're really hoping that the new assessment framework will be in place as soon as possible and that that, as I say, will give us more flexibility and enable us to get out to do more inspections. Thank you, Sue. Um, Matthew, if you don't mind, I'll bring you in for, for this one, but we've had uh, quite a few questions about the um, PIR um, and how we're using that. So um, we'd like just to sort of touch on how we're still um, using the PIR, please. Yep, Andy. So thanks, Andy. So the PIR is a really important tool um, to support our monitoring, um, but also to support us in being really focused when we do cross the threshold for an inspection um, to give us key lines of inquiry to follow up on to support us in understanding your improvement initiatives, what you're doing to ensure people receive really good, um, high quality, compassionate care and support. Um, so it's a really important tool for our inspectors to support them in their engagement with you, to support them in their monitoring, to support them in planning inspections, um, and, and, in, and what they look at when they do cross the threshold. Um, I know, Steve, you're on the call with us. I don't know if you would have anything to add to that in terms of how we're using the PIR at the moment. So, so thank you. Um, uh, the PIR is, is always on. Um, a number of you have asked questions about, does that mean we've got an inspection coming up if you've asked for a PIR? Um, the answer is no, we've, we've, we've made the PIR return much more uh, to do with the anniversary of, of providers registration. Um, so it is, it is therefore just informing our continuous monitoring of the service. So we are wanting to, to really hear from you through the PIR process because monitoring is is obviously um, trying to see where services have made 
that dramatic um, and significant and demonstrably beneficial improvement for the lives of the people that you support. So that I think is to answer a number of other questions about. So how are we to demonstrate our improvement to CQC uh, is, is the opportunity through the PIO. It always has been um, and, and it, is, it, it is there for you to use, I think, where you believe that your evidence supports the fact that you can demonstrate to us that your your service has really made that leap um, into being outstanding. We're really interested in hearing that um, as well as obviously services that um, have had problems and needing to improve and how that's being evidenced, not just in what you're doing, but how you know that it's having the benefit and improvement that you're seeking. Thank you for that. Thanks, Steve. Um, so there's a couple of questions um, just around if there isn't a statement on the, the website. Um, does that mean that there's some, some concerns or, or there's no concerns? Um, so in particular, if, if um, the, there is no summary received from us or if there's no public statement on the on the website, what does that mean for for that location or provider? I don't know if Sue or Matthew, maybe you'd like to pick that up. Don't mind. To John, to see. Yeah, do you want me to do it? Want me to take mm -hmm. it? Okay. So, so if there isn't a public statement at the moment, I think you can safely anticipate that there is going to be some sort of activity. So I think you know we, let's let's be open, absolutely open about that. So that means that at this moment in time, uh, there isn't a re, uh, there hasn't been a, a review, and therefore we are either going to do a monitoring approach or we're going to do an inspection. I think what it's really important to stress is that a direct monitoring approach can lead to an inspection. So I know there's been a couple of comments in the chat which talk about the fact that we are undertaking an awful lot of monitoring. Yes, we are. Actually, indeed, we always have. Um, it, is, it is more that we have got better intelligence now. We've got a system in, in which uh, we're able to do that. We've, the inspectors have got that information all in one place. And that monitoring approach either leads us to make um, a, a judgment that at this stage of the game, we don't need to do anything else or indeed that we need to inspect. That could be because we recognise that there is risk or indeed it actually could be that we've also seen that there is improvement. So, um, yeah, your, the answer to your question is that we um, it, it does mean that something else will be happening. But go back to priority. We can't do everything all at the same time. So even amongst those services that are waiting for a monitoring approach or waiting for an inspection, even within that, we are needing to prioritise all the time as to which one comes first. And if information of concern or risk comes in, then of course that might well take priority. So it's a case of us prioritising literally all the time, almost on a daily and weekly basis. Thank you, Sue. Um, so there's a couple of questions. So uh, we spoke about uh, an app within our, our presentation. So there's a couple of questions about um, what what is the the app. So you know, for us, it's the, the monitoring system. But what sort of um, information or sort of themes are, are we um, sort of considering when we're looking at that app and what's available to to our inspectors? Shall I pass that on over to you, Matthew? Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. So when we talk about an app, that's the system that our inspectors use for this approach. So that's the system that guides um, our inspectors about what activity to take with services on their portfolio, be that a monitoring activity, um, be that an inspection. Um, and that's the system that they'll use to record the information that they gather and that they analyse as part of a monitoring activity. Um, so when we refer to an app, it's about the internal system that we use for this approach approach. Um, so hopefully that covers it, Andy. Thank you. 
Thanks, thanks, Matthew. Uh, and I think just sort of a, a follow up question to that: if uh, if managers or providers don't sort of know what's triggered any concerns, um, how, how are providers able to to improve? Um, in in terms of providers finding out about any information that might trigger a monitoring activity or an inspection, um, our, our inspectors will always be open and transparent in their engagement with you, um, in the information they're looking at as part of their inspections, in the questions that they're asking you as part of monitoring activity. Um, so I think my advice would be just have a conversation with the inspector when you speak with them. Um, our inspections and our monitoring activities are always a collaborative process to arrive at the right judgments and um, to arrive at the right sort of regulatory activity. Um, we're not there to catch anybody out. We are open, we are transparent. So I would always come back to have a conversation with your inspector. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Matthew. Um, and just, I guess, sort of thinking about the future after our, our monitoring approach. Um, do we have a time scale that we can share in 2022 um, for, the, for the, any new methodology that might come in following this, uh, this new monitoring approach? I can see Sue's poise, shall I hand over to Sue? I don't think that we have a definitive date, but we are expecting it to be ready in 2022. And I know that uh, we have got um, uh, colleagues and policy colleagues working on it um, as we speak. And what I would say is that what from what we have seen so far, there are not going to be um, the, 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 we are still going to use the, the, the five key questions that we use now. Uh, what we want to be able to do is to be able to simplify some of the uh, clothes and the characteristics that sit underneath those key questions to make it easier both for the provider, um, but also for people using services to understand what it is that we've seen and, um, and the judgments that we've made. Um, so I don't think it is that you're going to be seeing um, from a methodology point of view, um, huge changes from, from, from the basis and the basics that we use. What we are wanting and what we are hoping for, as I say, is a more flexible approach that enables us where necessary to re-rate more regularly, to revisit more regularly. Uh, and some of the constraints that are on us at the moment from a legislative point of view, we're hoping to see some of that, um, some of that change. Um, but uh, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's imminent is what I would say to you, but I would be, it would be remiss of me to give you a, a, a definitive uh, date, which I just don't have. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I just go through the uh, uh, questions just to sort of see if there's any more themes coming coming out. Uh, so there's uh, a couple of questions on the the capacity tracker, and does that play any role? And if so, what role does the capacity tracker play in our our inspection process? Can you take that one, Matthew? Um, I, I can do. I think you might be best placed to answer it, Andy. OK, sure, I can, I can uh, answer that one. Um, I mean, yes, we, we do take information from the uh, from, from the capacity tracker and we use that as sort of part of the, the planning towards our, our monitoring approach. So, you know, we would uh, always encourage um, providers, managers to, to keep the capacity tracker up to date because we do sort of use that information to um, also look at sort of vaccination uh, status of, of staff as, as well. So, um, yes, we do sort of use that in the, in the planning of, um, of of any sort of monitoring call that, that we might might take. Um, so um, I can see just a couple of questions on our, our inspections in terms of um, time on site. Will that be linked to more observations, um, particularly sort of thinking of um, closed cultures as well and, and around sort of uh, learning disability services? Um, so I can see a couple of, of nods. Is that something you want to take, Sue or um, Matthew? Happy to start and then for us both to, uh, yeah. So the, 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 the great thing about the approach that we're using is because it brings together all of the evidence in one place in, and, and the inspectors have this 
app to use and just for clarity it's the app that the inspectors use i know there's still comments coming through that that um, i'm sorry if people misunderstood and thought that i was talking about an app that's going to be available for providers that's not what i'm talking about this is an app that our inspectors use but the benefit of it all being in one place is and the benefit of this approach is that it enables the inspector to really be able to assess the evidence that they've got look at it against the key questions look at it get look at it against the circumstances of that service whether maybe or not, whether for example there are um regulations at the moment that are in breach at that service whether you know maybe there's non-compliance within that service what does that mean and it enables the inspector to really be able to work through a process to be able to target their activity so that they know what it is that they're looking for they know the gaps that they're looking to fill so we're not going to be having an approach for a, a, a comprehensive approach like we had previously unless the service is absolutely brand new because we're this intelligence enables us to target the questions that we may ask the things that we may need to look for the questions that we might ask of people the observations that we make so it should in actual fact target our activity on site as well and so the inspector either um, knows what it is they're going to talk to the provider about during the call or they know what it is that they're going to look for during the inspection. And in some cases, it may very well be that they have enough evidence from a data and records point of view, and that actually they're looking to be able to speak to people and to observe um, interactions between um, care staff and people using services to get that confirmation of what that information is telling us. But each situation is different in the same way as each service is different. So, you know, it's not definitive. Um, so every circumstances is completely different. And the inspector has got, is going to still need to make that judgment about um, what it is that they're going to look for during the inspection. But we, we should see in some cases shorter inspections. Matthew, I don't know whether you want to add to that at all. Yeah, happy to. Thanks, Sue. I, I think that's absolutely right. I think um, all I would add to it is that people may notice our inspections feel a bit different. Um, people will probably notice that we ask for information and documentation to be sent to us either before the inspection or after the inspection. And absolutely, our time on site is likely to be really focused um, and really used to observe people's experience of receiving care, to speak with people, to speak with relatives, to speak with staff that are working in the service. Um, and I think my plea would be um, our inspectors and our in inspection teams will be really focused in the information that they ask of you. They'll be really focused in documents that they ask for you to send through. If you could please just really think about what is it the inspectors ask me? What's the best document that I can give to show that information? It might be a specific care plan. It might be a specific audit. It might be a specific piece of information. Please don't feel that you have to send lots and lots of different pieces of information, spend lots and lots of time collating documentation that maybe our inspection teams haven't asked for. I think if you're not really clear about what's been asked for, go back to the inspector, go back to the inspection team and get some clarification. What we absolutely don't want is for you and your teams to be spending lots and lots of time, for example, scanning documents to send through to us. We are um, going to be and continue to be really focused in the information that we ask of you. Um, so please do um, be focused in terms of what you're giving to us as well. Um, thanks, Andy. I don't know if you've got any other questions. Uh, well, whilst you're on, um, Matthew, there's, there's quite a few coming about vaccinations and how we're going to sort of approach that on, on inspection, if that's one that you wanted to pick up as well, please. Um, it might be one of it's all right, I hand over to Sue for. Yep, yeah, sure. OK, so um, absolutely appreciate and understand the um, the difficulties that you are having around um, vaccinations of care staff. Fully acknowledge the impact that that is having on um, on services. Um, and indeed, we're, we're also, as you know, our own inspectors also need to, to be mm. vaccinated as part of their a condition of their employment, too. So it's something that we ourselves are going through at, at this moment in time. Um, we, we, we're going to be 
uh, we, we, the legislation is there. It's important that you make sure that your staff are vaccinated, but we're going to approach this in the same way as we would um, all regulations in that we need to have a proportionate approach to this and be talking to you on a case by case basis as to what is happening within your service. But it is really important uh, that you recognise that the, if this is now a or will be uh, from November a, a legal requirement, but we want to be as proportionate as we possibly can and as understanding as we can within within the realms of the legislation. Thank you, Sue. Um, and just while you're, you're still live, oh, it's come back to me now anyway. Um, so uh, we'll still have some uh, questions in about um, requires improvement ratings. Um, and are we aware of uh, the impact on, on providers of what uh, a requires improvement rating may mean? So uh, an example given sort of financial penalties such as uh, insurance or, or getting bank loans. Yeah. I just wondered if um, yourself or Matthew wanted to touch on that at all, please. Yeah. We can we can do that. So we we have and we do recognise um, where there are business difficulties for providers when they um, when the current rating isn't reflective of the service that they are providing. And in, indeed, there's been a number of occasions when um, our inspectors have been out to rate a service because we know that by not doing so, that has decreased capacity in the um, the overall sector. And obviously, that's something that we really do not want to be um, responsible for. Um, so uh, please do talk to your inspector if that is causing you an issue um, and we will look at that. Um, what I can't do is make any guarantees and, and promises to anybody on this call about individual circumstances, because obviously we, need, we would need to um, assess the individual um, circumstances. But we have indeed been out to do inspections and we've reflected that improvement and re-rated where, uh, where in not doing so it would have caused a real difficulty for, um, uh, as I say, capacity in the sector. There's, there's a, I'm noticing there's a, a couple of comments about um, so some think, think maybe providers being misunderstood and thinking that we can downgrade without um, crossing a, a threshold. That is not the case. We cannot change the rating either, you know, from either up or down unless we cross the threshold. That is part of our current methodology. So we don't downgrade any services without crossing the threshold and undertaking an assessment and, of, of their rating. Thank you, Sue. Um, and uh, apologies to go back to um, staffing. So if there are any sort of staffing issues, um, how is this going to affect our approach to, to inspection? So um, what is it that we'll be sort of considering or, or looking at? In, and what is it that what, I, I'm not quite sure I understand the question really, Andy, sorry. Uh, no, that's OK. So uh, there's quite a few questions sort of coming about um, sort of staffing. So uh, if people are sort of uh, sort of self isolating or or struggling to get um, staff vaccinated. So in, in terms of when we go and inspect, what will CQC's approach be to, to sort of look at that? So, um, you know, if if locations are um, short staffed or, or struggling to to get staff vaccinated. Unless you want to come in, Steve, I know you've. Um, oh, I'm some. waiting for it to go live. It's. <laughs> I don't mind if you if you want me to. Oh, to, I'm live. To, I'm oh, live. there you go. Um, so I think it's I think it's really important to say that whilst we acknowledge that 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 there's there are potential difficulties here, we 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 cannot forget the the purpose and the role of CQC, which is around uh, making sure that people that live and use in and use those services are safe um, and you know the the public absolutely expects us to do that so whilst we may have a conversation and we try to be as proportionate as we possibly can and understand the given circumstances that a provider is in 
we we cannot be complicit in us in 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 allowing a service not you know that is not um, making sure that they're um, that, that the people who are using it are safe and and that has, that has never and won't won't ever change you know during during all of the time that I have worked in regulation, there have always been difficulties and it is a, it is an extremely difficult sector and we absolutely recognise that. But our role within that is to make sure that people are receiving um, safe care and a high quality care. And, and I'm, I'm afraid that that will always be our approach. So, Steve, I don't know whether you want to come in and add anything to that. Yeah, I, that's absolutely right, Sue. Um, uh, uh, nobody would expect us to compromise the essential, fundamental standards of care and safety. Um, they are, but 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 clearly, uh, we all recognise that there is a significant crisis in in many parts of the country in many types of service um, around staffing, um, and, and we we know that the pressure that that's putting on you and it's putting on people to get a high quality service. We know that you're you're you're, you're doing your best to deploy the resources that you've got in the best way that you can, um, and we really want to support you in that. But equally, if if and where there is real safety issues for people, then we have to take action. We can't we can't collude and you wouldn't expect us to or want us to um, with a service that or a situation that was unsafe for people. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Um, I think we've actually covered all the themes that I, I can see on the, the questions. Uh, I'm just going to check in my other colleagues just to sort of see if there's any that um, you've seen. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that people think that we're not answering their questions. Um, Announcing inspections, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, do you want to pick up and up so about Steve about announcing inspections? Have you seen a question? Do you do that, Steve? Yeah, so um, we've been very uh, keen um, in the last 18 months to make sure that um, you, you, you know when we're we're approaching you um, to make sure that um, we're not um, you know, spreading COVID, um, and that has been our our approach. We've always said that um, where a service uh, uh, has got is a is a home care community service, that you will need to know that. Um, we're coming in order to be able to uh, to prepare for that and to have people um, available for us to speak to. So that's um, no change. Um, but we've also always had feedback from people using services that that an unannounced inspection is really important to them to know that um, that we are we, we we are not alerting services um, unduly in advance to, uh, to, uh, to to the fact that they're going to be inspected. So I think we still want to retain the uh, the the uh, unannounced inspection, but we adapt it to the circumstances around COVID, and we adapt it obviously to the types of service where people may all be out during the course of the day, um, and and visiting when there's nobody there would be very foolish. So I think th these are all elements that come into our thinking around um, whether to give short notice of our imminent arrival or whether in fact we should stick with an unannounced inspection. I think that's right. I look to my colleagues to just to nod. Oh, good, they are nodding. I'm glad that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Steve. Um, and I think also just to acknowledge that, you know, uh, we have seen some of the, the other questions and, and comments in um, in the, the Q&A panel, but we are sort of predominantly focusing on the questions relating to the to the monitoring app. So they are the ones that we're picking out and uh, I'm responding to. Mm. Um, 
Uh, so uh, there's uh, um, a lot of likes about um, a sort of saying that um, we've emerged from 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 the pandemic, but um, you know I, I don't think that's necessarily what what we were sort of saying. But maybe we can just sort of clarify that. You know, we, we still uh, understand that that providers are uh, going through and locations are going through the, the pandemic. But um, you know, if that's come come across, then you know that's certainly not what not what we mean in terms of you know we, we've emerged from the pandemic. We can appreciate that um, we are still we're still going through it and appreciate you know it's um, still still very uh, difficult out, out on the, the front lines as, as well. Um, I, I think in terms of emerging from the pandemic, what we're saying is this is our, our approach in terms of how we move move sort of on um, during during this this time. Um, I'm just looking to my my colleagues on the call to see if there's any other themes that we think that we've we've missed. Um, I think there's a lot of repetition, so I think we've 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 I think we've covered most of the. I think we've covered most of them. Yeah, yeah. Apologies, just while we, we check through the questions, it, it does sort of uh, update. In is the, it in worth is it worth summarising that every service is different and people are wanting different? Should, should we do that? That there's yeah. every service is completely different and it's about there isn't a definitive stance at this moment in time. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, we hope that that's been helpful. We know that we can see from the um, the comments in the chat that we've been we've been trying to theme them and and to um, come up with as many answers as we possibly can. We also appreciate that there are some things at the moment that we haven't answered. Uh, we've we've tried to concentrate very much on the monitoring approach. Um, I know and I completely understand that people want us to give a definitive line for every different type of scenario, every different type of service, every different type of rating. And we just simply are not able to do that. Um, so this is why we are using a case by case, service by service type approach, using the intelligence that we've got, checking that out, reviewing it. We have a quality assurance process in place to keep on making sure that that is correct. It's really important to us as well that we get that right. So even though a service is um, it has a banner. There are a, a certain number of those services that every month we will be inspecting to make sure that we have got that right too. We can't give you, we can't say to you that services will be inspected within a shorter, a, a particular period of time because it depends on so many different factors. And we are looking at, um, you know, not just the rating, but the, the, the time since the last inspection, looking at the information we've got now. Have we already um, done some sort of um, uh, process uh, during, um, you, you know, it, 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 during the pandemic and what that has already told us. So there's so many different variables to what it is that we're doing. As, as Matthew has already alluded to, when you have contact with your inspector, whether it be via the call or whether it be when they cross the threshold, what I would say is, you know, talk to them about the decision making, talk to them about the judgment to come and cross the threshold, talk to them about what it is that they're looking for, talk to them about the questions that they are looking, they are asking you as part of that monitoring, um, as part of that monitoring call. Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm really sorry that I know that for some, you know, for some of you, 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 you know, you, you feel as though you, you're, you're needing and wanting more from CQC at this moment. We are doing everything we can get us to get ourselves back into a position uh, of being able to um, inspect, change ratings, review improvement. We recognise all of those things as being incredibly important to you, to your businesses, to the sector and indeed to people using services. So it is not that we don't acknowledge that, it absolutely is. And we're working as, as smartly and as effectively as we can to get back there as quickly as we can. So is there anything else that any of my colleagues would like to say in, in, in summary? I believe that we're going to put some um, Q&A together 
um, from this that will be available to you on the website and indeed for you to be able to share um, with other providers. And we will look again, It's as uh, you can appreciate when you're doing a call like this, we're, we're also trying to sort of uh, make sure that we've got the questions right and that we're scouring them correctly. We will re-look at the questions, see whether or not there is anything else that we can um, add into that Q&A and answer as many as we possibly possibly can but we really really appreciate your time really um uh, uh, appreciate you, you being here appreciate your questions appreciate your comments and absolutely a hundred percent appreciate the the hard work that each and every one of you are doing to keep people using services safe during this really difficult time so thank you very much everybody for joining us um, and we hope that you will um, join us again so thank you thank you